So what would you say to young people who feel as though they can listen to hip hop and be Christian? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's, what's wrong with it? Yeah, you know, um, I know like God uses different people in different places, mm -hmm. right? So when I was uh, getting my understanding of, uh, of this gospel and of this truth, um, it's a, f <laughs> you know, we were, we were so excited about what we were learning that we were, we said, we're going to take the three angels messages and we're going to put it in our hip hop music and we will go into clubs and we will be performing and we would pull out great controversy books out of our backpacks. We were like, we were, we were like, who wants to know who the man of sin is? Throw <laughs> your hands in the air. People throw their hands in the air and we throw out great controversy books. Wow. wow. And so, you know, God used us mm -hmm. for where we were. Mm -hmm. He used us at our, you know, at our, that level of knowledge that we had. And he uses different people in those different places. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now when you, you know, you listen to the lyrics of a lot of these songs and it's just, I mean, it's rock music. It's all kinds of different things. And, you know, I think the more you, uh, you, you, you try to get the mind of Christ, that's the key thing. Striving for the mind of Christ will show you how Christ wants you to walk. Mm. And so, you know, like I said, there are different people in different places, but learning, I, that's what I've learned over my years as being a Christian. It's sometimes you can point to things and be like, you know, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. But that's why my passion has really become studying the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because I think once people learn how to focus on Christ, all the other things, you know, that we typically like, you know, all those things begin to become self-evident. And so that's where my passion has become, mm. you know, really teaching people how to get into the Word of God. And you've even named your system, haven't yes, you? What's the name yes. of it? It's called Phototheology. Hmm. And um, the meaning behind that name is basically the study of God through the use of pictures. Hmm. And we'll get into that definition a little bit more, but uh, it's interesting because, you know, when I became uh, a Seventh-day Adventist. I, I didn't come in through an evangelistic series. I didn't um, come in through going to school. Uh, it was, I was, you know, a friend of a friend of mine's basically asked us a question one night. Very interesting. He, he asked us what day we think the Sabbath is. Mm -hmm. And we're all, you know, like 20 to 30 of us, we're all just hanging out this night talking and you know, we're all dread locked down and smoking our marijuana and stuff. And out of the blue, this guy that we never met before just asked us this question. I mean, he was a friend of a, a friend of a friend of ours, but we did not know him. So it was our first time meeting him that mm -hmm. night. We were talking about something I can't remember. And he, it was kind of along the lines of spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, we were just mixing spiritual things like, you know, like being kind of eclectic rappers, you know, yo, man, the, the New World Order, man, they out to get you, yo, yo, watch out, man, you know, <laughs> run for the beast, man, watch out for those soapboxes, yo, you know, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And um, he asked us, what day do we think the Sabbath is? And we were just like, that is a silly question. Like, what do you mean what day is the Sabbath? Everyone knows what day that is, it's Sunday. And from that one question, in that moment, this guy begins to break down to us Huh. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, and this whole change that, that the Bible said was going to happen and all these different things, and that really changed. It was that night that everything changed for us. Hmm. So um, I didn't learn through an evangelistic series. I basically, I didn't even know the guy was Adventist. <laughs> you know, for a while we were just like, there is no one on the planet that knows the Bible as good as this guy, <laughs> right? And yeah, then like a yeah. couple of weeks later, we're like, hey, what are you? He was like, I'm a seven day Adventist. What is that? Never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. So we end up going to church with him for the first time. And I share this in my testimony all the time. You know, we went into that church and imagine like 20 of us walking up into this little church in, <laughs> in Laurelton, Queens. Um, uh, Lebanon. It was a Lebanon Seventh-day Adventist church. Okay. And um, the people were just like 
like who is who are these people walking up into our church yeah. right <laughs> all like jeans and you know gum chewing oh, what's up, what's up? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and we we go in and sit down and as a pastor is speaking we are like losing our minds <laughs> <laughs> we're like what <laughs> yo he just said that jesus is the lord what <laughs> And, and everyone else was sitting around like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we were like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> they must not have just heard that the pastor just said that you have to pay tithe. They must not have heard that because I've never heard that truth before. Tithe. Everybody. <laughs> and we would look around like, what is the matter with these people? And we just didn't care. We were like, we just lost it, like literally everything the preacher said. We, wow. And so that's where like, you know, sometimes people see me preach and they're like, he gets excited when he yeah, preaches. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not something that's manufactured. Like that's how we came into the church. Yes. So, and we were just kind of shocked to look around and see people like, <laughs> we're like, we're yeah. not getting this. And it's been 24, 25 years now. You know, however long it's been since I've been, a, since I've been in the church, yes. and it is still the same issue. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I like, do. how is it that we I do. are not more excited mm -hmm. about the things that God has shown us in the scriptures? Yes, and so, you know, I this is how photo theology for me developed because I really didn't know. Like I said, I didn't go to school to learn to study how the Bible because I didn't even know we had Adventists had schools. So I was learning in a way that God was speaking to me mm -hmm. and I did not even realize it. Yes. You know, because I didn't know there is a system to Bible study and this is, I never had any of that. Yes. So as a hip hop artist, you know, the thing about musicians and you, you probably, you know this, is that we're very artistic, right? Mm -hmm. Music is a very creative thing. It takes a creative mind to be a musician. So in the hip hop industry, Whenever you write rhymes, you don't want to say what anyone else has said. Right. You don't want to, we called it biting back right. in the day. Mm -hmm. right. Don't bite. Don't bite, right? yeah. So you had to write in a way that was uniquely your own style. Mm -hmm. And so we would always be trying to think of how can I put this in a different way? How, how can I see that in a different way? That's how we wrote our lyrics. Mm. So when it came to studying the Bible, I didn't necessarily realize that that's what I was doing, mm -hmm. but that's what I was doing, right? And it wasn't an intentional thing. It was just like, okay, I'm looking at these words in the scripture and I'm like, huh, man, that word is pretty interesting. And I'd see that word like 200 different ways, like, huh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I just get like, wow, that, that's powerful. Yeah. So photo theology is basically what ended up coming, becoming the way that God taught me how to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. What was it like when that flip happened, when you found out that the Sabbath was Saturday, the yeah. seventh day Sabbath? What was um, that like? It was, it was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, um, I felt like I was in the twilight zone, <laughs> right? In a sense, it was just like, hold on. How can this be true? And remember, at this time, I don't know that there's a whole movement called, called Adventism. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking, how can everyone have this wrong? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, uh, you know, for, for a few, or a little while, I was like, me and my friends and this guy are the only ones on the planet <laughs> that have this information. And now it is up to us yeah. <laughs> to let the world know. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was just for a little while. And then it was like, oh, oh okay, there's a whole movement. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how many times you don't even know you have that void. You know that something's missing. Or maybe you're, you're just going through life and you don't really realize what's missing till you get it. Yeah. And then when you get it, what an amazing feeling that is. Like here you are just absorbing all of this information like a sponge. Yeah. And it's so exciting to you because this is something really new for you. You're in church and you're hearing all of this yeah. truth. Mm -hmm. 
and the re many times we as members take things for granted. Yeah. You know, you hear things and you hear sermons and all, and you you can take it for granted. You can take the truths for granted if your relationship with the Lord is not remaining fresh. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I'll tell and you, I've heard, you know, before I became an Adventist, as I was growing up as a young person, and getting into college, you know, I, I would hear different religious groups, relig you know, we'd have people come to our campus and, you know, speak and stuff like that. And I was always like, you know, that message sounds stupid. That sounds <laughs> stupid. You know, I was in a sense skeptical of religion. Okay. I was like, you know, I'm not going to become a religion because what's the difference between your religion and your religion? You know, you say be good, you say be good. So you know, why choose one over the other? And all of this is really just like, you can never know what, what truth is. Mm. So I was just, I was kind of skeptical against all religions. So, but when I heard this, it scared me because it made so much sense. Mm. Mm. And, and I was like, the, how, did this, how did this escape me? You know, how is it that this is making so much sense? It just had a ring of truth to it that a skeptical mind hearing it was like, whoa, this mm -hmm. is true, mm -hmm. this is true. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, you know, when, when I started studying, I was, the, the amount of information I learned in about three months time, I was, I was totally blown away. Mm -hmm. And this is what I thought, and I knew I was learning a lot. I was like, I cannot believe how much I have learned in three months. So when I would go to church, I would look at other people mm -hmm. who had been in the church for 10 years, 20 years, and I almost would want to fall down and worship. Like, <laughs> what must you know if you've been in the church for a whole 10 years? And I just pass out like, <laughs> I'll never catch up to them. I will never, because what I've learned in three months, yeah. Oh man, and I'm just thinking, everybody, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, this thing is so excited. Everybody <laughs> in the church is just like, you know, don't even try to touch him, man. <laughs> you know, that's my boy Henry over there. He's been an Adventist for 20 years. Don't touch him. <laughs> you can't touch him. You know, and little did I yes. realize. You were.